Thanks, Josh. Good morning, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and that was Josh Cook on guitar. He's going to be playing some music for us this morning. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot to talk about today. I got some city council stuff where they're talking about a lot of things from uh, bike sharing to um, the Fox site, the, the new Fox Hotel that they're going to be building in the next uh, 30, uh, 40 months. That's going to be happening in the city of Missoula. So big change is happening. I'll talk about that during city council. Got a lot of news, but we're going to kick things off with a little bit of weather. So check it out. 39 degrees now. It's a cool, crisp morning, but this weekend and today is going to be in the high 70s with Sunday seeing temperatures into the 80s. So you might get a chance to see some um, warmer, warmer temperatures as the sun just keeps on shining through the weekend. All right, let's talk about some quick news items. A couple of just quick quickens. Um, a new uh, scam is out for the new uh, Robert Plant tickets are popping up, so make sure you uh, log on through Logjam Pre Presents website to buy tickets for Robert Plant rather than going just basically Googling tickets for Robert Plant. So you want to avoid some of that stuff. Sentinel Boys and Hellgate Girls win the majority of the Missoula Track and Field competition in the city of Missoula for MCPS. Um, if you haven't heard on the radio or anywhere else, Else. Uh, I'm going to tell you that Dragon's Hollow play Playground area is closed for maintenance, but more importantly, volunteers are, are, are still in need of equipment and tools. If you have any tools or know somebody with tools, to um, ask them to lease them out to Dragon's Hollow, uh, to Teresa Cox and the uh, Carousel for Missoula and Dragon Hollow uh, people in the uh, downtown Karis Park area, and you'll get your tools back. They promise that they will leave the tools in prime condition after they use update the maintenance on the 20-year-old project that was Dragon's Hollow. In state news, Montana is one of the few states that has an increase in coal consumption as a result of the need for more electricity. Texas, Wyoming, and Kentucky have curved their use for the coal power about 40%. Um, hold on a second, my bad, it's not 40%, but they've actually seen coal uh, production for electricity going down. The Energy Information Administration said Thursday renewable energy sources such as wind, solar, and hydropower will fill much of the gap left by coal's decline. Natural gas remains the fuel of choice for power generation with an expected 40% share of U.S. markets this summer. International news, uh, imagine you're a woman who was captured and raped only to have a ch uh, only to basically be turned away by the family that you once knew. In recent story, women taken by ISIS have been freed in the thousands. Um, NPR did a story about these women who survived ISIS as prisoners and trafficked thousands of human lives. 3,500 kidnapped uh, Yazidi women, which are based out of northern Iraq, uh, are wel weren't welcome back. They have, uh, uh, they uh, basically, uh, they have to draw the line at accepting children with ISIS fathers. Many of the women ha that were held as sex slaves, uh, over a thousand kids were born from ISIS um, um, militants. Uh, because of the because of a dick stigmatism towards victims of rape in Arab and Kurdish re region, in which the Yaddish live, uh, decree uh, decreased well uh, decree welcoming the back was unprecedented. Many families refused to accept these women's children, with some women pleading with their families. Ye Yazidi uh, officials believe hundreds of children under the age of four have been born to Yazidi mothers kidnapped and raped by ISIS fighters. Some Yazidi put the figure over a thousand of children. The children will always have a stigma against them and will no longer have any say or place in the Yazidi re uh, region in northern Iraq. So many of these kids were sent to undisclosed orphanage by families of these women in Syria and to wait for families to adopt them. So it's a very interesting cultural uh, identity, but a lot of times they don't want any of the ISIS um, militants who rape these women to uh, basically dirty the blood, basically. It's pretty messed up. Yeah. I mean, you know, they were taken against the will, used as yeah. sex slaves. Yeah, you'd think they'd still be, like, welcomed back, but I guess different culture. I guess people still believe in yeah. pure bloodline or stuff like that. Yeah. Real messed up, man. Yeah. I mean, uh, women in those region have it the worst because if any, they're supposed to keep their virtue no matter what. And I even if it's beyond their control, they, they're punished for it regardless. Yeah. Yeah. So that's some uh, somber news for sure. But uh, yeah, wake up, wake up to that. Yeah, wake up to that. All right. So uh, here is some new programs that will be airing at Cat, and then I'm going to talk about some pre-critic right after this. They are they selected this 
young woman to be the first woman from their village who'd ever gone to university. And they just decided that that was really important. So they took $1,000 to get her into the university. Again, most importantly, the, the self-help group controls the money. Women are required to have that individual savings plan. And they, then they report um, back to right sharing on are people repaying their loans, how the businesses go, what's happening. And so once we got the jet stream and started being able to figure out where it was, um, we were still sending up our radio signs, so now we could map where the jet stream was pretty systematically as well. We started realizing that there's a coupling between the lower part of the atmosphere and the upper part of the atmosphere. And so we re revised our Norwegian polar front model, and we decided to come up with what we call the conveyor belt model. And in this one, we have air masses moving around on the ground, but we also have air from higher up, either as part of the jet stream um, or coming in around the sides of it. And we know that we get this complex interaction between air going up, air going up, air coming down. And the joy um, of the conveyor belt model is that we can't just apply this anywhere in the world. We have to... <coughs> Creator, we thank you for this day that you have given us, for this celebration that's going to happen today, this evening. We ask that you bless everyone. We thank you for rising today, and that we all come in good way, and we'll all go home in a good way. That we all have a good season this year to be safe. Keep us in a straight with our lives of drugs and alcohol. But we ask you to pity those who are suffering from these types of addictions. We ask for those who are sick for your blessing. Hey guys, welcome back. It's time for Pre-Critic, the, 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 the segment of the show where I judge a movie based on absolutely nothing but the title and maybe the synopsis. From Deadpool's Ryan Reynolds comes an intro into a movie franchise about animals fighting for our glory. Pokemon presents Detective Pikachu, which should have uh, had uh, Danny DeVito, but who cares because we have a modern day Danny DeVito in Ryan Reynolds who is pretty funny. Question mark? Oh, I like Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, well, yeah why not? He's, he's a good guy. You yeah. Know? He's a good voice actor, as we've discovered now, um, and he's gone from that awkward phase of CGI into like a new, a whole new world of CGI that actually yeah. makes him look good. Yeah, and who 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 can um you know who can hate P Pikachu because it's it's the cute factor. Yes. Uh, watch a movie uh, marketed to kids, but most thirty year olds like myself will see it. Um, I just want to say how well Pokemon look in this new movie because Pikachu looks cute and so can you. Um, and you it, okay, Dad goes missing. That's the plot, and his son and the Pokemon that he apparently can hear. He might be schizophrenic. Who cares? Uh, but they find him and they try to figure out why he was lost. And it has Mewtwo in it for some reason, so there's probably some kind of big kind of scandal and whatnot. Probably uh, breeding Pokemon and, you know, genetic engineered Pokemon. But anyways. Yeah, that's usually how that goes. It usually is. It's, it's like a, it's, it's a wannabe noir, but it has to be really dumbed down for children. Sorry, moving on. From the makers of, um, hey, you know, why don't we just kind of flip the script and let these ladies take care of this. Anne Hathaway, Oscar winner, Rebel Wilson, Australian, who play femme, femme fatale hustlers who hustle rich men out of their money using the, their femininity. Uh, anyways, before you get to uh, understand that a movie that shows and flips the tropes often misses the point of movies should lean on comedy and not necessarily tropes rather than 
so anyways, this I think this is a remake, and you know, so like any remake, it always has to kind of be like, always allude to the old stuff, but also do some new stuff as well. But honestly, I think that this is kind of like one of those typical movies where when you watch it, it's always like, okay, so the the master trains the person, but then the uh, the trainee becomes the master, and they have this kind of battle of wits, and then at the very end, it's just like, I got you, or did I? Blah blah, blah all that stuff. So you can expect that in this movie. All is true. Um, with, a li with every literary figure, there's a movie about the end of their life. Old Man Shakespeare, or All is True, in this movie about Bill, who is in the twilight of his life, but still has quite the reputation. Of course, you've seen Shakespeare's plays, you've seen him in love, and now watch as he is old. Sometimes art is appreciated when you're dead, but Shakespeare had a little bit of appreciation during life, so it's uh, definitely a win-win for him, and you get to see more movie about him in his life. Something like that. Besides, I think um, Shakespeare is a public domain figure that anyone can make a movie about at this point. So, hey, um, Josh. Josh. Hey. What's this stuff? And uh, that is a clip from Miami Connection. Can you play that again? What's this stuff? Can you uh, make it look like it's a uh, kick in the face or something? You want me to do that? Yeah, just like. Uh, put it right over my face. Are you sure? Yeah. You think you can handle it? Yeah, I think I can. Alright, hit it. What's this stuff? Oh. <laughs> you actually hear yourself with that? <laughs> no, I did that on purpose. Okay. I have a really dense part in the back of my head, so I can just ram it up against stuff. Really All right. dense. Well, we've seen a bunch of movies that are coming out this weekend. Well, here's a movie that's coming out just for you guys. It's called The Floor is Ghostly from Flagship Friday. Let's go play. Yeah! I don't care. That looks really big. That looks creepy. Let's go! Let's go! Let me go! I'm just going to walk on this. Disappear. Yeah, right. That's crazy. Then if you don't believe me, just do it. I don't care. Yeah! <laughs> oh, gosh. Not again. <laughs> Haley, did you see that? What? Adele, she's disappeared. Are you sure she didn't get out of your sight of vision? She is pretty short. Well, no. She did disappear. Same with Piper. Yeah, right. <sighs> I'll go help you find her. Shane! Stop! stop! You'll disappear like all the others! Yeah, right. I can do what I want. Well, I know what you can Someone disappeared at that? Well, they all disappear when they touch the floor. Get off the floor before it reaches us! We can touch the actual floor, but we can't touch the wood chips because that's how everybody else disappeared. True. Let's go. Hi. Yeah. Go, 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 go! Get away, get away, get away, get away, get away. Uh, get away. I think we're safe. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Yeah, this is Let's go. 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 Let's
All right, guys, I only have two more weeks of Flagship Friday before I wrap them up for the season. And then I'm also going to be wrapped for a couple weeks because I'll be taking a vacation. So look forward to seeing some sweet, sweet movies. Uh, next two Fridays, um, we're going to be showing um, a big movie that I made with the CS Porter kids. It's a two-parter. It's pretty good. You'll, you'll definitely enjoy it. And a lot of kids worked really hard on it. We had kids running audio, Slate, and all that stuff. So we really got a kind of professional setting for this movie. But you'll see it next Friday. And then the following Friday with the second part to the conclusion of the video and the conclusion of Flagship Friday for the season. All right. So without further ado, let's talk a little bit about some city council. Uh, one of the, the, uh, every Wednesday they do uh, committee meetings. And this time they're talking about uh, admin finance. And the Fox Hotel uh, are looking for an extension from May 22nd to uh, November 22nd, 2020 for all the permits to be put in place to build the new site. It's going to be huge. It's going to be a conference center. It's going to be a hotel. It's going to be a parking garage, all sorts of things, all in the Fox Triangle. Crispian Developmental Services talks about the site that will house a parking garage and all those stuff. A little bit more information, and you get a nice little top-down view map of where the thing is going to be. Way. So we're talking about the Fox site when we're talking about that is the area between this wall, which goes along the right of way for Orange Street, and the outside wall of the parking structure that was associated with Western Montana Clinic and, and Providence uh, for, for many, many years. So it's this big area, has a parking lot in it. It had a, uh, it's had a variety of history. I'm not going to go through it. Many of you have heard it too many times. So those that haven't, uh, there's, there's some things online you can take a look at. Um, but about this time, 1884, in this picture, but 1885, the area right in this area, it, said it looks like a, an island. It really turns out it wasn't, but this became the uh, landfill for the city of Missoula. It was kind of the edge of a, a not very nice district on Front Street. Um, as that uh, progressed, that became, uh, the, the, we're looking right down here, but we're looking at downtown here and how that's changed. Again, the landfill stayed there until about the 1920s. In the 1920s, the city council at that time uh, kind of declared itself owner of the land uh, where the, the uh, Parkway and now Orange Street Bridge uh, went, and they were going to build a conference center, a convention center for the city. They thought it was so important that they needed to do that, and they kind of laid claim to that land. Well, many years later and many lawsuits later, they found they didn't own that land. But All right, so that's kind of like where – that's some of the history of you know the site as well, what, what, which also was originally used to uh, – um, host the uh, the Fox Theater back in the day, um, which eventually closed and it was completely torn down and that place pretty much laid vacant and the city owned it from 1981 and basically waited for all that time for something to happen, but nothing really kind of happened in that part as well. And Chris Ben talks a little bit more about uh, uh, early talks in the 80s and shows what Missoula wanted on the site from the very beginning. And here is a great artist rendering of the site of, in which they want to build on the Fox Triangle. Over the years, starting, oh gosh, probably 1984, um, the city started looking for private development for this site. The hope was that using the, the kind of capital and creativity that comes out of private investment, that we'd be able to get something that really benefited the community and was appropriate on the riverfront. At that time, we were saying, we're, we're, we're tired of turning our back on the river, and that's actually going to be the primary asset for trying to rebuild downtown. And that, is, that has come forward. All there right, so were, let me pause that right there. Um, moving on to the next thing. Um, for five years, they've worked with the Hotel Fox, and hence the Fox site was aptly named. Ideally, this would stop through traffic through the uh, Broadway split and would, would move the throughway closer to the downtown area. Um, usually there's that little fork in the road that kind of splits off right there and they want to kind of cut it off and have like a kind of like a roundabout in a particular area when people turn in there and they'll be able to have access to the hotel's entrance facing the river. So that's kind of like the ideal. But a lot of this is all preliminary stuff and they're trying to work out a uh, plan to make this put into place which is why the permitting process is pretty much a year from November away. 
So it's a 10 story building with uh, mixed use public and private entities that would help attract bigger conferences like, like he said, a thousand seat hall is a prime example of space for large mega event type stuff. This will um, not an obligation bond um, being the ta tax increment financing would tax the hotel owner in the long run uh, since this isn't a residential property residents will not have to incur any costs. It's just the hotel property owners who will incur the costs later on. So um, the next thing I want to talk about is costs. You must be wondering, you know, how much is this going to cost? This is going to be a major undertaking and a major cost. Most hotels, like the one in the downtown area, were about uh, $40 million. This one's looking upwards in the $100 million range. So here's a little bit more information on that. You know, you can build a $40 million hotel and be able to find financing for that in, for Missoula. But when you're talking $100 million, that becomes a very different story. And right now, even though we're, have, we're doing well as a community and the economy of the state and the community is, is, is good, we're, becoming, we're on the radar and so on for a lot of things, for, for equity investors of that magnitude, there are a lot of, there's a lot of competition out there for known products and known communities in Seattle, Denver, even Spokane, uh, Salt Lake City, Portland. So uh, what we've got to, as I very, very briefly explain, and we're, I'm talking about an overview of six documents, each one of them 50 pages, um, a very complicated project. All right. And it's going to, it's, it's, it's been a huge undertaking. The city of Missoula really wants to move forward on this to help uh, cultivate a big, huge conference center and take Missoula to the next step of conferences and be able to provide uh, space for such large conferences to uh, try to get more big companies and other things to come through Missoula, even to do presentations. So Brian Von Lochsberg reflects on how the city is changing and how they want to extend the downtown from just being the hip strip. Um with housing potentially and parking and a number of things makes a lot more sense in that area and this project continues to make sense here. Uh, we're going through a downtown master plan update where we're really talking about that next step in the downtown's evolution from a one street downtown sort of Higgins to the two-dimensional, if you will, uh, Dan Cedarberg talks about this, I think, articulately of you know that Higgins and then the, the east-west connection with um, the new library and what we'll be able to achieve at the uh, at the block donated to the city on the east and then this over on the west. So um, I would hope that uh, this body would. Uh, support extending this. All right. So, and yes, the body did extend the uh, proposal for permitting for the extension. In uh, two weeks, they'll have an official presentation of the plan that will go into place for the future of the site. It's through admin finance, I believe. This project is slated for 30 months to completion from the permitting process in November 2020. So most likely construction and most construction season starts in the spring so it'll probably be spring 2021 when they'll be starting breaking some ground in the area of course you never know what's going to change in the next couple months especially in the next two weeks and of course to watch this meeting you can go to admin and finance through the city's website up next we got committee of the whole Missoula county public schools is talking about the new boundary lines mark thanes the superintendent talks a little bit more about this uh, from the heart of missoula yeah, yeah. If you draw a circle with a one-mile radius around Lewis and Clark Elementary, we presently have 755 kindergarten through fifth grade students residing in that area. The heart of Missoula has gone through a bit of a revitalization, and that's created some enrollment challenges for us. So, again, four schools are operating at capacity. They would be Lewis and Clark, Paxson, Rattlesnake, and the new Jeanette Rankin. And I, it's a fair question for the community to ask, why would you build a brand new school and open it in November of 2018 and be at capacity the day you open? All right. So one of the many things that the school is looking to try to do is they're trying to deviate a lot of the school systems to help spread it out. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, one, one prime example is that my sister uh, is bringing my niece to go to Jeanette Rankin School. And what they want to try to do is they want to uh, make sure that the school's capacity is 500. 
and they want to make sure that all the schools are at capacity for 500 students, which is why they're talking about reboundering and reworking some of those boundaries as well. Um, of course, many uh, boundaries don't want to expand uh, 500 students at any given elementary school. Ten years down the road, maximum capacity will exceed those uh, centrally located schools by more than 200 students. So change the boundary lines is essential with the uh, amount of students that will be coming in in the next 10 years. Mark Thane, superintendent, talks about the challenges and solutions that uh, the uh, school has proposed. As we hit capacity in buildings and families have moved in, we've leveled students out to other... Oh, wait, hold on a second. I think I... Did I get it right? You got it. No, 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 I got it wrong. I'm My sure. bad. Well, you, you got it, at least, under control. <laughs> Hold on a second. I just got to find the right quote. I totally deleted it by mistake. That's okay. Could you, um, like, sum it up? Okay, so this is what he has to say. Okay, no. ...able to attend their neighborhood school. They're actually being bused out to other schools where there is capacity. The challenge is that it's not done in any systematic way. It's based on first come, first serve. So a student might move in tomorrow on Big Fork Road, uh, 100 yards from the entrance to Jeanette Rankin School, and they may be bused to Chief Shardo School because there's no room in the inn. So one of the efforts that we undertook with our study was to identify some areas that we might actually carve out of the Jeanette Rankin attendance area and move to uh, both Russell and Chief Charlo so that we could create capacity at Jeanette Rankin and take advantage of available capacity at Chief Charlo and at Russell School. All right, so that's just kind of some of the things that the uh, school wants to do to help uh, curve uh, some of the capacity. Um, they don't want to like build a bigger school just for the sake of dealing with the expansion. They want to use the facilities they have to help um, even out the, the amount of kids in each of the schools. So uh, most of the adjustments for the, the for, are for the central locations and adjustments. So if you have a kid who goes like Paxson or any of those, or I believe Russell or some of the other places in the mid Heart, Missoula area, those areas are definitely going to change. But one of the concerns that many of you are just like, well, I have uh, one kid in this school, but I don't want another kid in another school. A lot of times the school is working with the, the, the system and the, uh, the parents to have a grandfathered in system. So if your kid already goes to school, they're not going to kick him out. The whole idea is that if your kid goes to the school, the kid will be in the school unless the, the parent wants to pull him out on their own and move him to a different school. But for the most part, the school will not kick out any children, but they will not accept any new children in a lot of the school areas if it's beyond capacity. So this was an information item for the city of Missoula. The school board official meeting, which we're going to be talking about this, is going to be on the second Tuesday of the month, which the next meeting is on May 14th. And it's going to be at the uh, South, uh, South Street, uh, right next to Central High School, and this is where they have their board meeting. Uh, MCAT will be live streaming it, I believe. Um, don't quote me on that, but we're going to be putting it on our channel 190. All right, moving on to the last meeting, and it's talking about bikes. Hey, you, you know, bike sharing. Bike sharing is uh, something that's kind of existed in the city of Missoula, but hasn't really kind of worked out too well. Several dockless bikes and scooters have, uh, share companies have inquired about operating in Missoula. Um, ordinance changes have to provide a guidance for such companies while preserving the health, safety, and wellness of the community. Ben Weiss, bike pet advisor for the city of Missoula, talks about bike sharing in Missoula. So this is Ben Weiss. Bike share in Missoula has existed in kind of one form or another for uh, over 20 years. Uh, Free Cycles got its start actually as a program that put uh, green bikes on the street for people to use. They had about 50 bikes um, and they lasted for a few years. Some of them ended up in the river uh, and I think were fished out by volunteers um, so, and some of them just walked away forever. But uh, it was kind of the first free roaming bike share program program that, that we had in the town. Um, over time then, uh, the university developed a yellow bike program, uh, probably just a few years after Free Cycles experiment. Um, they had a yellow bike checkout program where students could check out bikes for three days, uh, up to three days at a time. Um, 
The picture at the bottom there is the current yellow bike, although I, I think that program is in its final stages, perhaps. Okay. Uh, and then in the upper right is... Um, the Dasani blue bikes that Parks and Rec has, which don't cost anything to check out, but do require a credit card as collateral, and you need to go into to Currents to check them out. And so, all right, so bigger communities like Washington D.C. and um, New York City, Portland, all have kiosk type bikes where it's like a, a bike bank. So the whole idea is you pay at an ATM type machine, you uh, take the bike out, and you ride it around town, and you look for places to repark the bike when you're done with it. Um, a lot of that is initially a good idea because um, it's for larger communities. And Ben Weiss did a uh, feasibility study on how much these kiosks would cost, and it would cost about $1.2 million to implement that in the city of Missoula with about uh, 300 to about $500,000 a year just in maintenance alone. Of course, Ben talks about the systems that work and future possibilities of bike sharing programs. One of the main advantages of dockless systems are that you don't need all the real estate and you don't need the major investment. In fact, they don't cost cities anything. The private companies bring them in and they drop off the bikes and, and help manage the redistribution of them if they build up in one location and the maintenance of the bikes while even potentially sharing some of the revenue that they earn with the cities. And so it really is a... Uh, seemingly a better solution for small and medium-sized cities. The, the dock systems work well in large cities. Dockless seems to be where smaller cities are going. And of course, uh, they go on to continue to talk about the improvement of technology. You know, apps, smartphones, smart bikes, all that stuff um, really help uh, navigate. If the bikes go missing, they're able to find it. And usually to use these bikes, you have like a phone or some kind of deal to have collateral. So they know who checked out the bike. So if the bike ever goes missing, they know where to find it and basically who to blame. Uh, <laughs> so it's a lot more uh, integral in terms of that. But one of the things that um, they were talking about is it's not just about having a bike share uh, business in Missoula. They're working about how do you do a business like this in Missoula and not have to uh, regulate to certain um, conditions of ordinances and laws and, you know, just like bike lanes and what is considered um, different class systems of bikes. So scooters, motorized bikes, um, throttle bikes, all that stuff. So examples, class one bikes is pedal assist, which is an, it's an electric bike that you can pedal and it can go up to about seven miles per hour and it really helps you with going uphill. And if you exceed X amount of times, it snaps off so you don't go in X amount of space because any faster, your vehicle would be considered like a motor vehicle. Um, and so it's, it's a very just kind of uh, umbrella terms that they're trying to figure out what works and what doesn't. Um, throttle class two, so basically instead of being pedals with the motor, there's a little throttle to give you a little extra boost. And the only time that the, uh, it gets into really more intense motorized stuff is a class three, which is anything that goes beyond 20 miles per hour. Um, so it can be interpreted, state law has a certain uh, prohibition on what is considered motor vehicles. Um, but of course the city ordinances can update this to help interpret so they can have scooters that can go faster than five miles per hour. Otherwise, they will be not considered scooters, but motor vehicles. Bike signals have changed. Um, also, uh, one of the things that people uh, uh, you know, don't really think about is terms of when you're riding a bike in the downtown area and you, know, you, you, you lift the elbow and that signals like you're gonna go right instead of left. They, uh, from now on, they just basically want you to point in the direction you're going. I, that's just one of the changes they've done for bikes. If you're driving a car, they still want you to do that turn thing if your back lights are broken or anything like that. So if you have a, a broken back tail light or anything like that, and you still need to get around town, it's always smart to signal with your hand, even if it looks stupid. So it's better than being pulled over, just tell you what. I always thought that command looked pretty cool. Yeah. Like well, it's like, I mean, the, 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 that kind of command that you're showing right now is for, um, it's, it's mostly for cars because you only yeah. have the one hand out. But for bikes, a lot of times what I always see is that a bike does this they point in the direction. They don't actually point there, they go like this. They point to the street and be like, I'm gonna be over here or over here. Yeah. So that's Makes some sense. of the changes that uh, have been kind of going on with in terms of bike versus car signals. So yeah. manual signaling, I mean. So of course, the public hearing for this uh, updated ordinance will be June 3rd, in which they hope to get the ball rolling by early July. Um, usually when the ordinance passes, 
or uh, updates an ordinance it takes 30 days to go in effect so bike sharing they want to hopefully get this bike sharing thing with the companies going by the uh, midsummer so they can get some more bikes on the road and for you know give people the ability to uh, who come visit Missoula get on bikes and just take advantage of our trails so I don't know there's a lot of things happening within the city of Missoula and I know you're kind of pulling away Josh for sure what so so what did you learn Josh I learned that bikes are good yeah I like bikes bikes are fun yeah. uh, some you pedal has electricity makes go faster make bike easy nice more business. <laughs> yeah. One million dollars. <laughs> well, that's for the kiosk, if they decide to a kiosk. To make but a kiosk and 500000 for upkeep. Yeah. So the whole or idea of this ordinance is to basically say, yes, you guys can bring your fancy, spancy scooters here if you really want to. And they will. I mean, it's not, I mean, of course, you know, they said also Parks and Recreation has a bike share option, but you have to have like a card for collateral. So like a debit card or a credit card. You put it down, be like, here's the number on the card. You take the bike out and then whatever happens, happens. And yeah. either you pay for the whole bike or you just pay for the time they have the bike. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I saw a lot of those in Seattle. They have so many bike share things, but I didn't really see a lot of like specific bike paths. Which is a thing that's like kind of inconsistent in Missoula, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, one of the biggest bike paths that they're really trying to connect is the uh, is the one from Reserve all the way to the downtown area for sure. So they have that yeah. long path. If you take that long path, it goes basically from um, actually Hamilton now, since they have that overpass bridge, you're able to go all the way from Missoula to Hamilton without having to jump on the road. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it is cool. It, it it's an actual thing. Yeah, well, I haven't tried it yet. Yeah, it, it's before. quite a trek for sure. If you're going all the way to Hamilton, which is about like 40 miles. Walk. I've walked about that distance before. 40 miles? Yeah. Okay. Maybe like I believe half you. or so. I don't know. I've walked from like uh, that bridge area to East Missoula before. I have no idea how many miles that is. I don't know what a mile is. What's this stuff? Man? Yeah, what is this stuff? Yeah, what is this stuff? All right. <laughs> We're going to talk about some art stuff. Um, and let's throw it over to uh, MAM because they they have a new art installation you should totally check out. Man. And when I come back, I'm going to talk about some events. So stay with me. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. And that was Josh Cook on piano. I'm just looking for the natural um, end of the song for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know? Because you have a tendency to be like, like after you play the song, you're just like, boop, 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 boop. Yeah, I, I usually go into a crescendo, you know? That, that's usually like when you're, when you're doing, uh, when I'm doing improv, for me, it's uh, the easiest way to end a song is to just find a chord. 
Or, you know, better than that, but like... It's a good end to a song. Yeah. What is that over there? What's this stuff? What's this stuff? Alright, so let's talk about some um, events. That's what this stuff is. Uh, B.O.B. Breakfast on the Bridge. Bob. It's not, yeah, Bob. It's the Bob time. Uh, City of Missoula is May is Bike Month. Please join them for uh, an event. You could, uh, so they're doing a Higgins Bridge. Uh, they're doing this until about 9.30 this morning, which is pretty much already over. But let me tell you about all the other things that are happening. May 10th, they're going to do Owen Street Pedestrian Bridge. Next, the following Friday on the 17th is the Milwaukee Trail on Orange Street Bridge. They're doing uh, Scott Street Bridge on the 24th. And finally, Madison Street Bridge will be on the 31st. This is just bre breakfast on the bridge. You can enjoy some sweet breakfast on all the bridges of the city of Missoula. You can all check it out, except for, uh, for Russell. Why would you want to go to Russell? It's, it's in construction. Uh, and maybe, so, maybe next year when they have... Uh, I think that would be kind of fun to watch while you're eating breakfast. Yeah, I like that. You know, maybe offer the workers a little breakfast. That know? would actually be like really have kind. Some ham and uh, green eggs or some some like that. Yeah, I like bridges. Yeah, bridges like are cool. Breakfast. Why not both? No. Nope. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena. Uh, Flying Squirrel, Roots Acro Sports Center, and Amusement Gymnastics, all the indoor fun stuff for your kids to enjoy some trampoline fun, gymnastic stuff, and f some padded areas for some of your kids. They have all sorts of toddler time type stuff for the, all those kids and whatnot. It's wonderful. It's great. But it's going to be outdoor time now. So why would you want to be indoor? Hands-on science. More indoor stuff at the Spectrum Discovery Center. This is Explore the Wonders of Teeth and Why We Use Them at this Discovery Bench today. I don't know. Why do we use teeth? Mm, I wouldn't know. Moving on, yarns and watercolor. Visual Public Library at 12. Learn some yarns, make some stitch, make your own clothing, or do some watercolor and uh, let things dry out nicely. There's the Transgender Affirmative Care at Community Medical. It's the Gallagher Boardroom, um, presented by Oak Reed MA. It, this is all healthcare workers are encouraged to attend this engaging activity aimed to improving the quality of care provided to transgender individuals. It's a 90 minute training. You'll learn the importance of transgender terminology, barriers to care for transgender patients, statistics regarding health disparities, uh, how to overcome barriers to care and create a welcoming environment for all patients. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a very interesting uh, course, and I believe it is free uh, to go check out. So it's just, uh, uh, it, it's, it's the approach from the medical side of it to help people um, ease any kind of transition to their the g gender of choice. Nice. Yeah. It's very wholesome. Yeah. I dig. Cribbage and Bridge at Missoula Senior Center starting at 1230-ish. Um, it's lunchtime. You can destroy people at cribbage and or bridge. You always use the term destroy. Why not? But it's more terrifying when you say the phrase destroy old people. Destroy old people at yeah. cribbage and bridge. I'm pretty good at cribbage. Yeah, yeah. I love cribbage. Cribbage is dope. I don't know how to play bridge, which is why all my skill goes to cribbage. Yeah, at destroying old people. What is bridge? Bridge is... What is this stuff? It's kind of like when you uh, put some meat on some bread... And, but you don't put uh, bread over the food, so it's like an open-faced sandwich. Gross. Anyways, uh, that, that's not exactly it at all. All right, Zentile, Zentangle, sorry, Zentangle Drawing Workshop, Missoula Public Library is teaching you about Zentangle. You're going to ask you, hey, what is Zentangle? So this class is appropriate for age um, 8 to 108, but all any children attending must be accompanied by an adult and should feel comfortable in a quiet classroom environment. The class meets in the large meeting room space is limited to 12 participants. And doesn't really explain what Zentangle drawing is. So you can ask what is Zentangle when you take this workshop starting at 3 in this afternoon. Yeah. Family fun time at the YMCA, 3.30 to 5. It is a great opportunity. For uh, families of all kinds, sorry about that face. It's no, like it cool. it's like I have to burp, but I can't. It's it's even worse than having to sneeze, but you can't sneeze. Anyways, so, yeah. twenty two dollars for families. You got to have all the run of the facilities. Um, if you're a member, usually it's uh, free for a membership, but twenty two dollars if you want to just check it out with your family. Uh, Living Art Light Show. This is very important. Uh, Living Art of Montana. Uh, they do an art auction light show every single year, and it goes to support people who are in, uh, who have been diagnosed with a terminal illness, and it helps them through their pain through their art as well. So, and they sell the art to help support these programs as well. 
Yap Showcase, Zootown Arts Community Center. This is uh, for the Young, after, young Artist After School Program. They met every single Thursday through the last couple months, and this is their art showcase. It's going to happen on May 10th at 5.30 p.m., which is tonight. And it's going to be at the Zoo Zootown Arts Community Center. And you can check all that out and more by going on to MissoulaEvents.net. We got uh, Russ Nasset at the Union Club. You got karaoke at Lolo Hot Springs. You got Neon Lights at Flying Squirrel. You got Lonesome Gold at the VFW. Dead Hipster present I Love the 90s Dance Party at the Badlander. Pinky and the Floyd is going to be playing at the Wilma tonight. And Missoula Community Chorus Spring Concert is going to be at St. Anthony Church tonight as well. Um, I also want to give a shout out to uh, MCT's Disney's. Newsies the musical. Yeah, they say Disney's or they'll sue you. Because um, whatever. MCT's, Disney's, Newsies, the musicals. Musicals. Yep. So they're going to be doing that tonight and this weekend. There's about five performances left until I am free. I mean, until the show is done. Yeah. And wonderful. But hey, if you, if you see a spotlight, just yell, Scott. <laughs> and I'll go, shut up. <laughs> yeah, and you'll be like, uh, cool. Yeah. Well, honestly, last night, uh, one of the performers gave a really, really good performance that an audience member did a very loud, audible, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was like, it was like, what? It was, it, it, wow. It was like, wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. All right. So let's, uh, we have one more clip for you guys. I do have a, a segment that I'm going to throw on you guys at the last minute, so stay with me. Uh, but I do have uh, Saturday events right after this. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about events that are happening for Saturday. People's Market is kicking off this Saturday. Get your knickknacks, patty wax, and give that dog a bone because it's time for the People's Market out front of the Thomas Mar Bar off Pine Street. You can't miss it. Just walk downtown and you'll be able to see it. People sell knickknacks from all around. Made in Montana means something in this crafts uh, weekly f uh, fair. And it's going to happen from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. every single Saturday well until October. So. Check it all out. And awesome. also Farmer's Market and the, uh, the Clark Fork River Market all happens around from 9 to about two, 1 p.m. It really depends upon if there's a lot of foot traffic going around there. So those are kind of the things that are happening this weekend. Bike Valet Service, Karis Park, May is Bike Month. Please join for one of their mini events this month. They'll be, they'll be offering a free ballet, uh, bike valet service from 1 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Clark Fork markets located under the Higgins Street Bridge. I believe this is uh, basically a large bike with a little uh, cubby in the back where you can sit and hang out with someone bikes for you around the downtown Missoula area. Bike for Shelter, Washington Children's Shelter. I had Hayden Groats on here the uh, uh, last week and this is the main event that's happening tomorrow starting at 8 a.m. and this goes to support uh, children who have been misplaced out of their homes in temporary housing. Um, so this is to support them and the Washington Children's Shelter. This is their 19th annual Bike for Shelter. It is free to attend. Um, and many of the sponsors, so uh, Montana Railing is one of their biggest sponsors from the very beginning. Um, family friendly. 
It's 10 mile neighborhood bike ride or a two mile fun loop for the little guys. And you can join some barbecue lunch, no cones, music, face painting, and carnival games. They got bounce houses, which are going to be quite lit for sure. I don't know why I said lit. That's dumb. Uh, um, so. <laughs> What's this stuff, man? Okay, I'll, I'll stop. Okay. <laughs> no, women's, please don't stop. Women's Veteran Forum. So if you're a, a veteran and you're a woman, a woman veteran particularly, enjoy a day with other women veteran at, at American Legion Post 27. This is a day f for uh, women to relax, enjoy each other's company, and find ways to help themselves with current health issues. They'll be recognizing World War II, veteran, World War II Korean and Vietnam women veterans for all their valiant services. RSVP with Kim K. McCarty Martin. Uh, it's 701-260. Uh, 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 actually, you know what? I'll just show the number online. It's, it's a long number, so I'll just flash it online so you guys get a chance to see the number in which you can reach. You can email them at Wow, there's a lot. This is very complicated. <laughs> so this is the number you guys can call for uh, Women's Veteran uh, to help uh, uh, this forum, and it's going to be hosted at American Legion Post 27 tomorrow at 9 a.m. Saturday open hours at the Moon Randolph Homestead. Moon Randolph Homestead has kicked things off. It's the homestead that is owned by Missoula, so you own this place. You guys can check it out anytime. They have open hours from 11 a.m. to about 5 p.m. And this is uh, do tours, photography, painting, picnics, and play. Explore the history of Homestead as you, at your own pace or receive a tour from one of the caretakers or volunteers. And while you do this, you can send your kids to uh, MCAT Saturday drop-ins. We only have two more weekends left until Saturday drop-ins are finished. So MCAT Saturday drop-ins from 1 to 5 p.m. every Saturday until May 18th, which is next Saturday. Your kid for $10 or $15 for siblings can enjoy stop animation, uh, uh, what's that called? Uh, claymation, Legos, um, some live action stuff as well. This is just a place for kids to come in and create stuff. What started off as just a primary animation camp is kind of expanded to uh, help uh, uh, cultivate a child's creativity. Yeah, that sounds good, right? Yeah, that was a nice pose. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Great. Anyways, <laughs> Five Valley Land Trust 25th Annual Banquet, University of Montana, starting at 5.30 p.m. Uh, there's 47 extraordinary years protecting what you love about Western Montana, and you can join them at the University of Montana. It's going to be in the UC Center, otherwise known as the University Center Center, includes an exciting live and silent auction, musical entertainment, and delicious dinner. Come mingle with your friends and neighbors to help raise funds needed to protect more the of this or extraordinary place. It's $60 per person, $600 for a table of 10, Bands, bands, and uh, drag shows all night long is happening at MissoulaEvents.net. If you're interested in learning more about that, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. MissoulaEvents.net is your local resources for everything Missoula. Hey, you want to know what's going on in Missoula? Go to MissoulaEvents.net. What's this stuff? Man? It's MissoulaEvents.net. What's this stuff? Man? I just told you. MissoulaEvents.net. All that wonderful thing as well. Hey, we still have enough time. Would you want to play... Oh, Asaph's blowing up my phone. Anyways, <laughs> uh, um, he must have realized that his video that, okay, so Asaph Adam and I posted a video uh, which has Chewbacca, and it's like, dude, it's Star Wars. What do you expect it to be completely blocked from YouTube? Anyways, um, <laughs> yeah, well. um the copyright it's it's like he strong. doesn't understand the idea of copyright. Anyways, yeah, YouTube will flag that stuff, especially EMG, you know the e EGM, whatever that company is. They like flag even like yeah. Three seconds they look they something. they look for sound waves, and if it matches a certain sound wave, you're done, son. Um, <laughs> done, son. All right, do you want to play the game? This time it's we're bringing back an old favorite. Um, I usually do the I usually used to do this when I had a co-host and Asaf also on the show. Um, it's called Hallmark Hallmark or Bullmark. It's where I read a synopsis oh, from yeah. a Hallmark original movie, or do I? And you must decide whether or not it's a real Hallmark original movie or it's complete hogwash. Okay. Bullmark. You yeah. ready to play? Yeah, man. I've seen maybe a Hallmark movie in my time. Yeah. The synopsis is are ridiculous. Yeah. Just warning you. Okay. And it's up to you to decide whether that that's uh, Hallmark or Bullmark. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. We only have five minutes left in the show. Right, uh, small town girl. 
and budding writer. Kelly Rogers gets a taste of big city life, but before she thinks she can get the perfect job, she has to beat the driven and handsome Colin. But when a rivalry turns into something more, Kelly must decide if she's uh, if she should choose between her career or her dearest. The movie is called Dear Career. Hallmark or Bullmark? Definitely Hallmark. Well, it's definitely Bullmark. Uh, you got the first one wrong. You ready for the next one? Yeah. All right. Portland interior designer Julia Galvins adopts a dog and seeks the help of an expert and handsome dog trainer, Owen Michaels. You see where this is going. Uh, when she is hired to design a nursery and puppery, as well as plan a pup puppy show fundraiser for her pageant client and her pageant dog, but with a little help from Owen, may have all the bark she'll ever want. The movie's called? Pepperoni. <laughs> Love at first bark. Oof. That's Hallmark. You're right. It is okay, a Hallmark yeah. original movie. You know, I should have known that the first one was fake as soon as you said small town girl. It, there's always small town girl. Yeah, I know, but there's never, always small town girl or small town boy moves to the big city. It's either like they come from a big city or it's, they always go into like a smaller town and it's always like kind of condensalized. They, move, they usually do it in like. Um, Washington yeah. and, you know, Oregon, Washington, Oregon, and the northern uh, California areas. Yeah. But yeah. I, I feel like they never actually say small town girl. They just Yeah, they it. totally do. Really? They totally do. Like, every single That's time. A tough game, man. Big city boy moves to the small town where he must decide whether or not he's going to stay with the one he loves. If there's anything to learn from this game, it's that you should probably write Hallmark movies. Yeah. I totally should. I have a list. Or Lifetime Original. I have a list of Hallmark movies that I made up over the time for the Bullmark segment, and I just put it into a file, so potential use for them to use later on. Nice. Like a pitch. It'd be like, here's my major pitches for all the synopsis. It'd be like, thank you. We have our slate for the next two months. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. It's like, uh, and of course, uh, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff as well, so I'm glad you could play with me. Thanks. We will continue that in the future. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to end the show. Um, I want to give a couple uh, nods to our website, MCAT.org, if you're interested in having your kid join our summer camps. Uh, our sorry drop-ins are ending, but our summer camps are just beginning. Um, summer camps, you can sign up by logging on to MCAT.org. You can learn for more information by clicking on the link where you see little Graham Martin right here. He's all grown, he's all grown up now, and little Neil Wells right there. <laughs> when he had shorter hair. Little Graham. Yep. And then this is, I think this is somebody else, um, some other kid. I can't remember his name at the top of my head, but there's a lot of kids that have grown up through MCAT and have gotten jobs here as well. So uh, I'm going to end the show before I get played out. So uh, take it away, Josh.